Hey everyone, welcome to another session of Sorazzle Dazzle Physics. In this video guys, I'm going to be talking about the relationship between upthrust and pressure difference in a liquid. So put down today's title, it's going to be upthrust and pressure difference in a liquid. Okay, let's get straight into it. Okay, so over here I've got a fish tank and I've got a block in place within it. Yes, so here's a cube. Yeah, 3D. Right, so hopefully you remember that uh, pressure will be acting upon this cube. So there'll be a pressure at the top of the cube and a pressure at the bottom of the cube. Notice that the pressure won't be the same because it's at different heights. So the pressure at the top of the cube will not be the same as the pressure at the bottom of the cube here. I'll just drop this line over here. There we go. Let's uh, draw this. So the height is going to be from the surface. Let's call this one H1, the height of the first one. And the bottom one, don't forget, uh, it's going to be at H2. So don't forget H2 over here. So we're over here. There we go. Right, so we can say that the pressure at the bottom of the object will be given by rho g h2. Hopefully you've seen this video before. If you haven't, just look at the description below. You'll find that I've done a video explaining where this formula comes from and how to use it. So the pressure at the bottom of the cube will be equal to rho, the density of the liquid, times by the gravitational field strength, times by the height of the column, which is going to be the height from the surface downwards. Right, what about the pressure at the top? The pressure at the top will be also equal to the density, which is constant, times by the gravitational field strength, times by H1. Hopefully you recognise that the pressure at the bottom will be different from the pressure at the top. Right, so from here we can recognise that um, there will be a pressure difference between the top and the bottom of this, the top and the bottom. So we're going to call this the change in pressure, or the pressure difference over here. So the change in pressure will be equal to the pressure at the bottom subtracting the pressure at the top of the cube over here. Now we've got a pressure difference between the top and the bottom. Let's put down the formula then. This becomes rho g h2 minus rho g h1 over here. That's going to be equal to the pressure difference over here. Right, you might be thinking, why on earth am I talking about the pressure difference? Well, the pressure difference will be able to tell us how much upthrust the upthrust on this object will be. So the upthrust from here. Right, now, what is the connection between the upthrust and the pressure difference? Well, we can put it down as the following. The pressure difference delta P results in a force upon the object, which is the upthrust. So using the pressure difference, we can actually work out the upthrust upon the object. Right, okay, so now from here, um, we're going to connect them. So how is the upthrust related to the pressure difference? Well, hopefully you remember that the upthrust, yes, over here, is going to be equal to a force. Yeah, it's a force acting upon the object. Right, and hopefully you recognise the link between pressure difference and force. But previously we talked about pressure is equal to force divided by the area, yes? So the force is therefore equal to the difference in the pressure, or the pressure difference between them, times by the area over here, the area. Right, what is the area? So loads of kids don't understand what the area is. It's the area of this, so the area of this. If I was to shade it in, it's this area over here. So if I was to label this bit as x, and this bit as x, so assuming they're both the same, x, x over here, the area is going to be equal to x squared. Hopefully you understand that the area of this is going to be x times by x, therefore making it x squared. So then finally my formula becomes over here, the change in pressure, um, we can also factorise this one out um, to make it a bit nicer for us. Delta P is equal to rho G, open bracket, H2 minus H1, yes, G uh, grouping like terms together. That then goes into here, so therefore it becomes over here, rho G, open bracket, H2 minus H1, close bracket, times by area, which is x squared. Yes, it's going to be the x squared over here. So the upthrust can be calculated with this formula. So the upthrust will be equal to the pressure difference times by the area. So there you go, guys. In order to work out the upthrust upon this object, it's simply going to be equal to the pressure difference times by the area. And this is the area over here, which I've shaded in. All right, so now let's tackle a question uh, based upon this principle. Okay, so let's tackle a question based upon what we have just learnt. Calculate the upthrust upon this object. So calculate the upthrust upon this object. Right, so hopefully you remember that we just said that the upthrust is going to be equal to, so the upthrust is going to be equal to, the pressure difference, delta P, times by the area. Okay, 
You know, that's the key thing. Right, let's find the pressure difference. So the change in pressure between the top and the bottom plates, so yeah, bottom and top plate over here, it's going to be the pressure in at the bottom, the pressure at the bottom, uh, subtracting the pressure at the top over here. The pressure at the bottom will be given by rho g h2, yes, minus the pressure at the top, rho g h1. And now from here, everyone, I'm just going to um, group the like terms together, density times by gravity times by h2 minus h1. That's going to be my pressure difference. Okay, so the density, we've got it at the top. It's a 1,000 over here. The gravitational field strength, let's take it as 10. So we're taking g is equal to 10 newtons per kilogram because we're on Earth. Obviously, if you're on a different planet, g will change. Open bracket h2, what's the height 2? It's 4 over here. h1 is 1 over there. So 4 minus 1. So delta P over here is going to be equal to, the change in pressure between these two points is going to be equal to 30,000 Pascal over here. That's going to be my value, yes? So I've done 1,000 times by 10 times by 3. Right, now if I want to work out the upfrost, we said that the upfrost over here will be equal to the change in pressure, we said from before, delta P times by the area. Right, we know the pressure difference is going to be 30,000. 30,000 over here, Pascal. Now the area, the area of this square, don't forget this area over here. The area, guys, the area will be equal to this multiplied by this, but don't forget this is in centimeters, let's convert it into meters. It will be 0 0.02 times by 0 0.03. So yes, this times by this one over here. Therefore, we can get the area to become, area is going to be equal to six times by 10 to the minus four, meters squared. There we go. Then plugging that into this top bit over here, it becomes 6 times by 10 to the minus 4 over here. Then finally multiplying these both together, I'm going to get the upfrost to be 18 newtons. So my final answer guys over here is going to be 18 newtons for the upfrost. Make sure you understand how I've done this. Yes, yeah? so initially we said that the upfrost is equal to the pressure difference times by the area. I worked at the pressure at the bottom, pressure at the top. And then we simply uh, worked out the pressure difference, yes, and I did some factorization over here. We got 30,000 Pascal. Then I simply times it by the area of the cube at the bottom, and therefore we managed to work out the upfrost to be 18 newtons. Don't forget the area, I had to calculate it in meters squared, so I had to convert the 2 centimeters into meters squared and the 3 centimeters as well. And that's how we got our answer. And if you're still struggling in any physics, guys, why not check out my entire YouTube channel? I've got hundreds and hundreds of videos to help you with studies, and I'm a fully qualified teacher. Ciao, ciao, and goodbye.